Just been spending some time in thought. Let's unleash control selected. I'm waggling my damn mouse between the two. Ah. We, uh, we resolved to, to crack those out and test them and practice them. I just can't think using pump is great. I just can't think it's a great look. I just can't think it's... Maybe it is. I don't know. Like, I don't think the fame monster regrets the choice. He's perfectly fine with it, although the fucking story keeps trying to tell us it's a problem. But, like, me sitting here, I'm like, damn. Maybe there was a path where it would have been okay. Rebellion dropped down in uh, his opinion of us. I guess maybe he really did care about it and it wasn't a setup. I don't know, I'm conflicted. The chapter name, uh... <laughs> doesn't do wonders either. Chapter 11, Nullified. The smell of incense burns your nostrils, and you wonder how much longer this will take. The last place you want to be at... The last place you want to be is a meek ceremony, but you were forced to go as part of the Hero Project schedule. Even then, you were inclined to skip it until you heard what was happening after the ceremony. The deacon closes the meek's constitution from his spot atop the stage, clasping his hands and bowing in deference. You thought you might hear a reading or two from the meek's special text, but there was none of that. Apparently, one must make an adequate donation to the movement to be worthy of receiving that privilege. <laughs> The ceremony, presided over by a deacon who looks more like an aged movie star than anything else, was mostly a series of arbitrary rituals and readings from articles about recent powered mishaps, all of which serve to boil your blood, but you'll get your chance to respond. The real reason you're here is for the debate about powered rights between several of the Hero Project's finalists. It's taking place after the ceremony, and will be moderated by Constance Obach herself. And you cannot wait to weigh in. Thirty minutes later. I must admit I'm terribly excited about this event. We of the meek believe in an open, honest exchange of ideas to bring us further towards humble inheritance. Constance sits perched in front of in front of you, <laughs> a tight smile spread across her plain face. She wears her hair pulled in a bun, paired with modest makeup and a traditional suit. But you can tell the hair and makeup were carefully done by top-notch stylists, and the suit must have cost a fortune. Very slugging humble indeed. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome our panel from the Hero Project. Outspoken powered equality advocate, Summit, two of the most prominent and infamous infinity powered individuals, the Crush and the Ineffable, our future first son of America, Aaron Victon, known popularly as Jury, and finally our very own meek hero, Inherit. The audience goes wild with applause after those last two introductions. It's no secret that the meek have been capital contributors to the Victon campaign, bagging his platform of powered regulation. And even though Victon has been performing well in the national debates, the polls are still evenly split. Whatever. Which means this race is particularly down to the wire, considering Election Tuesday is coming up next week. How convenient! Part 1 of the Hero Project's big finale will also be airing the next day, so no matter what, Jury's exposure on the Hero Project has been a very, very good thing for the Victon campaign. So if you're going to do anything to try and lessen the Victon's chance of success, now is the time. Okay. Cameras are all going to be on us. This is definitely, this is definitely public record. Yeah. We got to make that not be a very good thing. But we're in hostile territory. We here at the Meek Movement commend all the finalists' many successes, both inside and outside the competition, individually and collectively, Constance continues, glancing at the rest of the final nine seated in the audience. The Hero Project serves as the perfect example of how diverse ideological representations can come together, in true American tradition. But our time is short today, so let's begin, Constance says, shifting in her swivel chair. Our first topic for discussion is the rise of infinity powers and its role in our ever-changing society. Perhaps the Ineffable would like to start us off by commenting on how Infinity Powers have changed his life. Actually, I have a question for you, you respond, gearing up. Now is your chance to speak up, so you better not waste it.
Does this matter? Do we get all of these? Do we have one? Asking all of them bad? Was asking all of them bad when we had the choice to with the crush? Is this... Uh, forgive my... <laughs> Not just silence, but truculence? <laughs> just staring at this going like, does this matter? Do I actually care? Do I think this will impact my sliders at all to be relevant in any meaningful capacity? Maybe this? I don't know. That's two questions. That doesn't sound like it gets anywhere. That... I don't... Um, hmm. We already have a sense of what what should happen to the regulation. So, how are Inherit's man-made powers any different that mine? I earn my powers through ways more natural to man, through science and innovation, Inherit says. How is that more natural than being born with them, you return? And you didn't earn anything. The meek spent the money they've used ripping off their followers to buy that for you. I've worked my entire life to hone my powers. How is that not earning it? However hard you may have worked, Summit jumps in, there is nothing I could have ever done in my life to have the powers you do. And that's not how a capitalist democracy should work. Actually, that's exactly how it should work, you respond. Everyone is born with different circumstances and skills. A capitalist democracy is about giving each citizen the same opportunity to use those skills and overcome their backgrounds through hard work. And I should note, you absolutely can have the powers that I do. Look at Inherit, or yourself. Where there's a will, there's a way. They may not be exactly the same. But shouldn't our society value diversity? Says the one with near-omnipotent power, Summit says. The people on top are always fine with the status quo. I've said enough. After what happened to your own parents, how can you not see the light? Inherit suddenly cuts in. You turn to inherit, and for a moment, your vision flashes red with anger. This kind of anti-powered rhetoric is exactly what took your parents away from you in the first place. I believe in Mayor Victon and what he stands for, the crush says before you can lash out, maintaining an almost eerie calm. However, you meek people fear and hate powered people, and would like nothing more than to see us all murdered. But you hide that dark truth with smiles and rhetoric. You speak of open conversation, but you have no interest in anything but a platform to tout your sheltered views. Trust me, I was the king of that once, but not today. And with that, the crush stands up, takes off his microphone, and walks off stage. This is exactly the kind of superiority complex, the kind of dismissive attitude that will doom the infinity, Constance yells after the crush, eliciting boos from the crowd. Your powers affect you, affect all of us in ways you cannot understand. This is exactly. Thanks for the openness and the honesty, you stay, say, standing to follow the crush. It has been a true revelation. Part of you wants to stay and say more, but a larger part of you knows that participating any further won't help anything. You spoke your piece, and you have to hope that there are people out there willing to listen. Thirty minutes later. Just got shrug. I... I don't... I don't know how much that's going to impact the story, but I, uh, ultimately it's how the fame monster felt. like to think that he was poised in front of the crush. You know, we asked a, a pointed question. It wasn't, uh, 
It wasn't uh, directly hostile. It also wasn't like, please explain your views and opinions to me. It was a genuine curiosity about the differences in powers. And then, we're done. You sit in silence in the Hero Project transport across from Gigi, who clearly is searching for the right words to start a conversation after that debacle. Not particularly wanting to talk to anyone at this moment, you look out the window and catch another glimpse of one of those hero of one of those the Hero Project finalist hollow billboards. It looks like a few things have changed. The eliminated finalists are now grouped together by place. Tell me more about Scoundrel after what happened. Oh, didn't do anything. And the remaining nine finalists have updated storylines, all of which have also updated in your Ship Chips show stat screen for further review. Frontrunner of the First Sun, the Fallen Star, the Independent Woman, the Dark Horse, the Rising Star, the Inspiration, the Soloist, the Ruthless Strategist. Whatever your public image may be, you know you've been fighting an uphill battle this entire competition, and that you've beat all the odds to still be here, which is exactly what you've done your entire life. And... Cool. Cool. Out of curiosity, the Fallen Star. Very public fall from grace. Oh my god, my god, my god. <laughs> um... It doesn't have the billboards of the Eliminated, huh? Eh, it did update them. Whatever. Let's move on. There is no denying that Inherent, Jury, Summit, The Crush, Black Magic, and Null have been the six strongest and most consistent performers throughout the competition. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you, Wintry, or Stage Show should be counted out. It only means that these last three eliminations are bound to be shockers. Listen, there isn't much to say about Thursday's vote. Gigi starts knowing better than to bring up the debate mess he just forced you into. And when you don't immediately bite his head off, he goes on. Yes, I was thinking about this. And I went to the restroom and grabbed a drink. Since only you, Null, and Jury are eligible for the elimination vote, each of your individual two votes automatically go to the other two finalists, canceling each other out. Which means the other six finalists control the vote. You've been trying to avoid thinking about the vote for as long as possible, because you already know exactly what Gigi is about to say next. Uh, four of those six votes are members of your popular alliance, which guarantees four votes for Null. But those same four populars then have to decide whether to vote for you or Jury. Now, considering that Inherit and Jury are so close and that Inherit is a de facto popular leader, and well taken into account how Summit and the Crush are likely to vote, I don't... No, just look here. Gigi pulls up a mead chip hollow display, finding it difficult to make eye contact with you. And you can see why. Doing the math in your head, that would make five votes for you, four for Null, and three for Jury. Are you sure that Wintry and Stage Show wouldn't vote for... Inherit and Jury have them locked in pretty tightly, Gigi interrupts. Plus, I'm pretty sure Wintry still holds a grudge against... Grudge after how you voted in the first... I get it, you say, clenching your jaw. So even after siding with the populars, you're going to be nominated for a ninth place elimination? That's a load of a slugger. I'm sorry, the ineffable. No matter which way we cut, I'm afraid that you and Null are going to be nominated against one another on Thursday night. You don't know what to say. And actually, you can't say anything to show Gigi how close you really are to the girl under the Null mask, or how devastating this news is. Is there anything we can do to take Jury down, you ask? Hoping Gigi has come up with some secret brilliant scheme. The ineffable. You need to listen to me when I say this. Gigi says, growing uncharacteristically serious. And Grimith just misplacing the the previous affectation he had used for Gigi's delightful voice for this chapter, for whatever reason. <laughs> Jury is staying, and doing anything to try and change that will be a monumental waste of time and energy. You open your mouth to object, but Gigi just sends you another look. Trust me, don't bother. Fucker. Listen, this might actually be a good thing. It would be fairly impossible for you to beat Jury in a head-to-head -head public vote right now, so it's better that you go up against Null. I mean, she has performed well and certainly has a steady following, but she also seems to scare just as many people she attracts. Uh, plus, I have it on pretty good record that you really can't trust her. If I were you, I'd do whatever I could to take Null down this week. Just stay silent. 
Well, you had better hope you're like better than Null, Chickadee, Gigi says, turning away from you to pout, because come Thursday, it's going to be you or her. One day later. You sit silently across from Ginny in her Null suit, and even though you're only protected by her anti-surveillance haze for a limited time, neither of you are sure where to begin. After how you voted last round, you and Ginny haven't spoken at all, outside of the mission mishap, that is. Suppose we, uh, spent so much time with Black Magic that we haven't been available, right? You're not sure there's anything you even could say to make things better. But it's not like she offered to leave the underdogs to support you, either. It was, uh, it was her way or nothing, as usual. You still haven't decided if you should tell Tenet Ginny about what's been going on with your Infinity Powers lately, or about Rebellion's pump offer, so you let Ginny speak first. We shouldn't waste time talking about things that we can't change. But I do have something really important to tell you, and I need for you to hear me. You nod, knowing that Ginny is right. There's nothing to say that will make this situation any better. My investigation has taken quite a disturbing turn, the ineffable. I just had an unexpected breakthrough. Remember when I used that EMP to shut down Inherit's mead ship during the last mission? Yeah, I remember that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I totally told you to do that. Mm -hmm. I noticed something when the EMP went off. I set it to target Inherit's specialized power-generating mead ship signature. There should have just been one signal on the scene, but there were two. And the second signal was coming from Jury's mead ship. Do their mead ships have something else in common? It could be that, or anything else, really. I don't know yet. But that's not what matters in the scheme of things. What does matter is that the Meek must have funded Jury's mead ship power generator, since the signal was identical to Inherit's Meek mead ship signal. This isn't terribly shocking, given the, Meek, the Meek's connections to the Victim campaign. Still, I decided to do some digging, and I found that these unique Meek mead ships also have a specialized transmission frequency, one that Inherit and Jury have both been using to communicate secretly, securely with the Meek. Once again, not terribly shocking. Jenny pauses, obviously building up to her big reveal. What is potentially shocking... She needs to do not do this pausing shit since there's only a limited amount of time and her... Whatever. <laughs> what is potentially shocking, however, is that I picked up one more Meek transmission signal coming from the contestant mansion last night. Okay, let's read this one more time. So I understand. Without ranting. Gives me an excuse to take a drink. Okay. Who is it from, you ask? The signal is scrambled, so I can't tell whose mead ship the third transmission is coming from, Jenny answers. It could be anyone, really. And it could be completely harmless, just a regular meek member on the Hero Project staff. But the thing is, the high security nature of the transmission suggests otherwise. And, well, putting all of the pieces together, spit it out, you say. Ginny usually isn't usually this cautious. What's holding her back? I think this could be the anti-government terrorist mole we've been looking for, Jenny sighs. And if this mole is connected to the Meek, I think this is where your Infinity Tip comes in. If there really is a Meek mole in the Hero Project, they might be here to carry out some kind of terrorist plot against Infinity Powers. Your mind spins. Could that really be true? And if it is, who do you think this meek mole could be? You immediately begin running through the options, trying to find the most likely one. One of the populars is working with Inherit and Jury. One of the eliminated finalists in the nearby Sequester House. Summit. Rush. Rexford. Rebellion. Gigi. Lucky. Hero Project, Scoundrel, Straws, doesn't matter what that third transmission was. Okay. Scoundrel doesn't have enough juice, I'm thinking. I'm eliminating most of these options out of hand. Like this, pff, this, pff, this, pff, nah. We'll just go through the nose. No. Don't think so. Don't think that's the most likely thing. No. That and Scoundrel are like tied together. We're gonna say no on that. We're gonna say no on that as well. 
So back through the list. Scoundrel just doesn't have enough juice, enough power, enough, like, thing, shit to matter. She can't, like, like, that's not that big of a deal. I know she was, like, one of 14, but in the grand scheme of things, not that big of a deal to hold that much sway. I, I don't... I could be... Who fucking knows, right? I just... No, I think there's easier options to pick here. I don't think it's Rexford. It could be. Like... <laughs> he really could do anything to benefit his show. But I think the most likely thing here is Rebellion. Not just what it's saying here, but that shit with Pump last chapter. Like, I'm willing to say that more than anything else because of Pump. Uh, that Rebellion had that conversation with us to get us to take that, and it would fuck with us. Like, it makes the Crush appear powerful now. You know, it juices him up, but, like... Like, that could easily be us being set up, right? Who has to know that the Crush actually took that? Who knows whether the Crush actually fucking took that? Right? Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, GG, sure. But based on what we've seen, I don't think, like, he's the, like, there's not, like, enough, like, context clues there. Scoundrel? Could be, but she doesn't seem that important. Rexford, I don't think he has as much of an angle here to care as Rebellion does. And the reason why I'm picking Rebellion, like, more so than anything else, is because of what happened last chapter. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, the Fame Monster and Grimoth are fully aligned here. It's Rebellion. Yeah, and we, we have a serious grudge against that man. To think your idol could be working with the Meek is pretty devastating and also fairly unlikely given his remarkable heroic tenure, and he has placed the crush here in the competition to help improve Infinity's empowered image, unless that's not Rebellion's true intention. Though that couldn't possibly be true, you know there's no way Rebellion would work with the Meek, period. Okay, game. Sure. There's no way that could happen. Hermit says, narrowing his eyes. I'm not ruling anything out yet. Any scenario could still be viable, Jenny continues. We're working on sorting this all out and decoding that third meek transmission. But until we do that, we don't know enough to stop whatever they're potentially planning. And with the finale coming up, we're running out of time, Jenny says, pinching her elbow. Hearing this, you feel your heart plummeting your stomach. It just seems like, you know, he's been built up, Rebellion, that this would be, you know, get on the winning team. He sees where the nation's going, right? Which means that you and the Crush might be in danger here, Grimeth, Jenny finally says. I wish that there was a way for us to send Jury home instead, but we both know he's untouchable right now. The fact that it's down to just me and you for tonight's vote makes this ten times harder, but I can't guarantee it's safe for you here. And I can't continue to investigate if I get sent eliminated either, Jenny finishes, which means I have to ask you to go home, Grimeth. Jenny can barely look at you as she says this. You know how tough this must be for her. You and Jenny have been working on this investigation for weeks, but maybe you both want to find something that isn't really there. Do you think there could be any actual danger threatening you here? And if there is, could you really engineer your own exit from the Hero Project? This is a pretty big warning from Jenny, but it is also just that, a warning, not a guarantee, like the Herologist provided. Still, if you don't sacrifice yourself, will allowing Jenny to go home and stopping her investigation be a big mistake? Not just for you, but for Ginny's career as a government agent? No. They, it was, they, she was told to fucking stop. This is unofficial on her part. It could have been, like, unofficial, wink. Though you can't help but think that you have so much more at stake with your own heroic career. Winning this show would change your entire life. How can you possibly decide between your dreams and Jenny? <laughs> eh. We'll figure it out. These are very tough questions, but your gut immediately tells you all you need to know. I trust you 100%, Jenny. I know you have my best interest at heart, but I don't think there's enough intel to prove I have to leave the competition. Are you sure this isn't some ploy to keep you- No, I don't think that. 
I really think there's nothing else to prove here, Jenny. Without the investigation, there's no reason for you to stay here over me. I know you have my best interests at heart, but I don't think there's enough intel to prove. I have to leave the competition. We do trust her. Maybe less than 100% after finding out she's known, but she did tell us that. We've been helping the investigation this entire time. Yeah, I think this one is best fitting for this character. I know this is a lot for you to take in, Jenny says, standing up. You should take some time to think it over. And on that note, Jenny walks away, leaving you to ju do just that. What the slug are you going to do? Later that day. <sighs> ah, the ineffable. Thanks for making the time to see me. Please, sit, Rexford says. As you settle on the Rexford's ultra-modern green and gold sofa, you want to laugh. Because you both know this little meeting was mandatory, like most of your scheduled time since being on the Hero Project. Following your meeting with Jenny, you've been trying to decide what to do all day. Our character has a real hard time deciding what to do with his time. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're no closer to knowing the right move than you were all those hours ago, and time is running out. But for now, it's best to hear what Rexford has to say before you make any final decisions. You know, this game, this gig book, the story, doesn't feel very active, huh? It feels passive. You know, thinking back at the first one, maybe you just do this whole reality show, like, angle. Excited for tonight's mission episode? It's a great one, even after that whole millennial group disaster, Rexford says, sitting down across from you. I must say I'm terribly pleased with how our fans are investing in you, the ineffable. They seem to find you very relatable. Your story is one that many people can connect with in some way. Which is why I want you to do well while I have you on my show. I truly do. Now tell me, how have your infinity powers been working since you decided not to take Rebellion's help? You should have known that Rexford would be clued into this whole pump thing. You suppose he does own the Hero Project and the American Protectorate, after all. I don't need any drugs to help me control my own power. I appreciated the offer, but I'm doing great on my own. I don't, you don't have to worry, my infinity powers are working just fine. I'm learning how to use my infinity powers at my own pace. You think this modifies this slider at all? Because I'm tempted to pick the first option, but I look at that control word and... Or do these options even matter at all? Go ahead and take another drink while I think about it. I don't need any drugs to help me control my own power. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear you feel that. You have it handled. It was quite a show, watching you go up against the crush. I can tell you it gets a lot of play in tonight's episode, Rexford says. But anyway, I really brought you here to talk about tomorrow's vote. Let me read that paragraph again. I was glad to see you took my advice about voting popular last time. I know it must have been a hard decision, but if you learn nothing else from this experience, at least learn this. Sometimes the ends really do justify the means when you're trying to serve the greater good. <laughs> yes, yeah, like pissing you off in the first story. Rexford stands beginning to pace the room's room as he works up a good dramatic moment. It's like he's still posing for the cameras, even though you know there wouldn't be any in here to film a meeting like this. Hmm... Being a hero is about being a figure that people can look up to. It's about inspiring the masses. It's up to us to make the tough calls. The calls that no one else can make. For us, there's no such thing as right or wrong, good guys or bad guys. There are only those who can do what must be done, and those who can't. And the ineffable? We must be strong enough to do what works, what will produce results. You blink at Rexford. He's obviously building to something with his grand speech, trying to affect you in some way.
<laughs> Even still, the faint monster agrees with what Rexford is saying. The Ineffable puts on the big people pants to do what other folks can't. And, uh, killed Prodigal. Went through everything in that first story. Lived a fucking vigilante life. Yeah. Yeah. We negatively impacted Rexford's life. <laughs> so did Prodigal that way. I mean, he's still full of slugger. He still has many angles, but... You know, we can end up being more valuable to him now in the grand scheme of things. We can remain suspicious. Here's the truth, the inevitable, Rexford says. Null makes me nervous. Of all my little heroes, I know the least about her. She is truly a blank page, which is rather shocking in this day and age, don't you think? Rexford doesn't wait for an answer, continuing the pace of the room. You're Null's roommate. She requested you personally, as a matter of fact. I thought it was a rather curious request at the time, but I let it slide, because I knew that eventually, being Null's roommate, you would see or hear something the rest of us wouldn't. She may be an anti-surveillance whiz, but her guard can't truly be up all the time, am I right? What are you asking, you ask, not liking where this is headed. Gigi tells me you already know that you'll be nominated against Null tomorrow. It's rather unavoidable, I'm afraid. Rexford sighs. And if it were up to me, you'd stay. The ineffable. Null's an anomaly, and I don't like anomalies. So help me help you. Give me something I can use against Null. Something I can leak before America's vote tonight, Rexford says approaching you. Tell me who Null really is underneath that mask of hers. You stare up at Rexford, your blood running cold. And if I don't? Oh, I'm sure you will, Rexford starts, because if I don't have anything big to use against Null, I'm afraid of what the press might uncover about you instead, with nothing else to focus on. You know how terribly ravenous they can be. Look at poor Black Magic. Oh, how quickly the mighty can fall. Rexford looks you dead in the eye, barely giving you time to sort through the series of veiled threats he just threw your way. But however Rexford might try to disguise it, his message is clear. Give up something on Null, or he'll make sure you get eliminated. In some brutal way. Slugger. The missions episode goes live in 15 minutes, a PA says, poking her head through Rexford's door before disappearing again. Rexford nods, turning to you. I'm afraid that means our time has run out, he says, grabbing his suit jacket. But listen, the ineffable. If you do this, if you compromise now for this silly competition, you elevate yourself to a place where you can do some real good. Once we create the American Protector, we'll have the power to save the entire world. Don't you see that? You stare at Rexford and take a deep breath. Could you really tell Rexford that Null is Jenny just to save yourself? And after what Jenny just shared with you about her investigation, what's truly the right thing to do here? Could this be a way out of the competition to protect Jenny? Or should you stand up for your dreams, no matter what the cost? As your mind races, you think about what you've seen happen to the cast also of these reality shows. No matter how promising they seem with the temporary spotlight on them, well, when it disappears, it's nearly impossible for most of them to recapture the same glory. Slugger, you've seen it happen in your own career after the whole prodigal incident. Could your career really survive a ninth place finish on the Hero Project? Then again, could your relationship with Ginny survive this kind of betrayal? The room seems to spin around you. After everything you've been through, how could it all boil down to this? Sell out your best friend or see your own dreams go up in flames. But one thing matters more than all the rest. You know at the end that at the end of the day, your parents are watching what happens on the Hero Project. You want to do what would make them proud. So are you with me, the Ineffable? Are you willing to make the sacrifices necessary to change the world? I'm afraid I need your answer now. Whether this is about the Ineffable's career, or protecting Jenny, Whether it's about advancing his own agenda, that of his parents, his grandma. Whether it's about fame, and glory, and wealth. 
protecting his best friend who's been around to help and connected with himself and his grandma through troubling times. I don't think the ineffable could say for sure what the primary motivator here is. I also can't say for sure whether cameras are actually watching. Because Rexford's speech there sounded tailored for a camera, like Black Magic's and like many other like speeches across the game. Yeah. Jenny needs out of here. That we can take care of the rest of the investigation that got cancelled on her anyway. No, it was really Jenny Yu, an undercover DRPR agent. Well, 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 that changes everything now, doesn't it? Rexford says, grinning as he begins to process what you've told him. As the revelation settles, he walks forward and puts a hand on your shoulder. Knowing now who Null truly is to you, this must have been very difficult, the ineffable. I had no idea, Rexford says, trying to hide the giddiness in his voice. But trust me when I say that you did the right thing. I think we're going to have a very bright future together. After that, you just watch Rexford go without another word, as those few words just changed the rest of your life forever. One day later. You look across the stage at Jenny, who holds her null helmet in her hands as her Elimination Journey Hollow video plays, and it threatens to crack your heart. Last night, Rexford leaked the information you gave him on Null slash Jenny and the entire nation went into a frenzy over the revelation that a DRPR agent was embedded in the Hero Project. You spent the entire night alone on the mansion roof as the media storm kicked up, too afraid to return to your room and face Jenny. Especially after the conversation you had earlier that day. When you finally did see Jenny, it wasn't until the elimination ceremony went live and she wouldn't even look at you. Character doesn't do a whole grade at, like, keeping up a front, right? The stalwart face, you know, masking things. Not like... Doesn't... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> From there, the finalist vote and nominations played out exactly as Gigi had projected. And after the media blitz on Null's true persona, Ginny was eliminated by a landslide in the public vote. All because of you. The entire night seems to have gone by as one giant blur, with you in the center as you have been in the center of everything forever. Just a casual, non-observer. You didn't even feel anything during Jenny's final speech, where she could have easily called you out as the one who betrayed her. But Jenny knows just as well as you that the public will figure out you were the one to sell her out given your history. Unfortunately, you know that's going to affect your own image in a major way. No, you don't feel anything, really. At least, not until the hollow video ends, and the episode taping finishes, and Ginny comes up to you, holding back the tears in her eyes. She takes a few moments to collect herself, then she says, You are dead to me. And in that moment, you finally feel the full weight of what you've done. Because you know those will probably be the last words Ginny ever speaks to you. Later. You stand in the center of a decadent celebration for the final eight, but you find it hard to enjoy much of anything right now. Even though all of your fellow popular alliance members, well, all except jury, came by to apologize for voting for you, <laughs> and express their happiness that you survived, you couldn't help but find their words a bit empty. The only person who could make you feel slightly better was Black Magic, who assured you that you did the right thing. He promised that someday everyone will see it that way, too. And as terrible as it feels to lose Jenny this way, it feels good to have someone like Black Magic on your side. Someone you can truly trust in all this craziness. After everything that just happened, all you can think is... Sliders. <laughs> Lucky's more pissed. Jenny. We're dead to her. 
Grandma is like, what the fuck? Rexford, thumbs up from him. We are hated more than we are loved. Significant hit there. I'm not thrilled about how things turned out, but I did what I had to do. However you feel about getting Ginny eliminated, you made the final eight of the Hero Project, which means that you will be a part of next week's big finale, and you'll get the chance to fight Kulik. By this time next week, you'll have hopefully defeated Kulik and survived the final two eliminations to win the Hero Project, become a founding member of the American Protectorate, the greatest powered team this nation has ever seen. At least it had better happen that way after all you've sacrificed to be here.